Hey, we're live. All right, good morning. And uh, I think that we have just about everybody, almost everybody, it looks like the count is still raising. So we'll wait another minute to get formally started. Thanks. All right, that's probably good. Thank you for joining us today for uh, our webinar to introduce the Draft Regional Trail Network. I'm Victoria Cacciatore and I'm the project manager for the Sacramento Region Parks and Trail Strategic Development Plan, which is a project to identify the dynamic system of interconnected trails and parks across El Dorado, Placer, Sacramento, Sutter, Yolo, and Yuba counties. And now I'm going to hand things off to Robert for helpful meeting participation tips. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar. Uh, as you may have heard, this meeting is being recorded. If you guys have any questions, we ask that you guys chat or type them in the Q&A um, so that we can answer them at a later time. You'll see a prompt pop up for the uh, PowerPoint. If you guys have any Zoom questions, you can send me a private chat and I'll help you guys out with any Zoom logistics that you do need. Um, we're not going to be using the raise your hand feature today, so do type your questions into the Q&A. Thank you, Robert. Uh, and we will be posting this uh, webinar on our project website after the meeting, so you can always check back there. Uh, we'll send out that link to as a meeting follow-up. So before we jump in, I'll do a quick recap of who is the Sacramento Area Council of Governments for those of you who are uh, new to say COG as an entity. Uh, Sacramento Area Council of Governments is where local leaders in the Sacramento region come together to advance the goals of economic prosperity, connected communities, and vibrant places. SACOG works with the 28 member cities and counties to solve challenges that are too big for any one entity to solve on their own. We play a central role in transportation infrastructure planning and funding assistance for cities, counties, and transit operators and other entities that are responsible for providing travel needs of our region's residents. Uh, we are the Metropolitan Planning Organization for all six counties that you see here on the screen. And we're also the Regional Transportation Planning Agency for Yuba, Sutter, Yolo, and Sacramento, which means that we get to work closely with Placer County Transportation Planning Agency and the El Dorado County Transportation Commission for many different transportation plans and uh, funding issues. And I'll take a quick moment to uh, point out the team, some of which who are here on the, the webinar today. Uh, working on the Regional Parks and Trails Strategic Development Plan, we have Laura Bell performing GIS services, uh, myself, Maricela Salazar, and Dustin Foster conducting transportation analysis, and introducing Hannah Schuden as our outreach coordinator. And lastly, Robert Tadovich ensuring a technically smooth webinar for today. So now that you know a little bit about us, 
let's hear a little more about you. And I'll hand it off to Hannah for that. Hello, so you should all have um, a poll launched on your screen. Um, and the question today is, what brings you to today's meeting? Um, are you a bicycle and pedestrian enthusiast? Um, were you a part of early discussions for this project? Have you attended a previous webinar or took the survey? Are you interested in learning more about this plan? And um, does the draft network intersect with your personal or professional interest? Great, so it looks like a majority of people um, have a personal or professional interest in this plan. Um, there's also quite a few people who are just interested in learning more. Thank you for joining us today. And um, also a lot of people who are bicycle and pedestrian enthusiasts. That's great. Perfect. It looks like about everybody has participated, so I'll share the results. Yeah, like we said, a lot of people are interested in this uh, for personal and professional interests. Um, and yeah, great. Thank you for joining us. Before we move on, uh, uh, moderating that for uh, the, the duration of this meeting. Uh, so we have a question, will there be public participation or public comment time? Uh, Victoria, you want to take, take that uh, question? Sure. Uh, we, are, we will have a couple of different times for question and answers. We encourage people to submit uh, public comments to directly to Hannah Shudin through either email or phone. We will uh, receive any comments that are uh, provided through this though, and work those in with other public comments that we have, but we're also encouraged to follow up directly with Hannah. Any, all right, got the thumbs up. So let's dive in. So PACOG helps our cities and counties tackle many complex problems. So why would this, a regional trail network be a priority. You could look at it uh, the SACOG's role as a transportation planning agency. Uh, we are tasked with finding ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, a regional trail network could help support that by uh, creating the opportunities for trip replacement, by reducing the need for single occupancy vehicle trips. Uh, and it could also be a way that you can support the economy, either as a tourism driver or by increasing the quality of life of residents. And that can incentivize businesses to site here or uh, motivate people to stay here, reducing instances of brain drain. Uh, but most importantly, view a regional connected trail network as a foundation for strong communities. These trails can provide access to noteworthy public places. Often the trail itself becomes a destination. It also is a way to increase access to green space that is key for both mental and physical health of regions residents. So we feel that all of these are coming together for a really strong reason to pursue a, a connected regional trail network. Find that it's also a way to make the highest and best use of our resources, where a trail can add to the value of a neighborhood, even if you personally do not use it, because you have the option of having, say, uh, in this example from a, an established neighborhood in Rancho Cordova, where you could have an abandoned rail uh, going behind your house, or you could have a, a transportation amenity that People can also use for quick breaks uh, you know, from their family or with their family uh, during the day on weekends or you know, to get to their job. So this plan is a way for us to define a region through transportation and also lever that to increase quality of life. 
So with these lofty visions in mind of what a trail network book could or should do to bring value to a region, we needed to learn how a six county regional trail network would tie to our region, what makes the Sacramento region unique and what residents value. And what we can do to not just you know, connect a trail network and call it a done day, but to form an asset that people that live here would use and value. So to start figuring out how a regional trail network would not just exist within the Sacramento region, but would add value to it, we started by analyzing close to 80 local and regional plans uh, back when we started this uh, in late 2019, early 2020. Uh, through those uh, close to 80 plans, we also cross-checked with uh, different state plans to see where there were opportunities for uh, alignment and uh, greater coordination. So with that, we identified that there are six foundational goals that it doesn't matter if you're the east of the region or the west of the region, the north or the south, these are present in all of your local documents about uh, whether it's uh, the circulation element of your general plan, whether it's a trail specific plan or a bicycle transportation plan. Uh, and what we know also is that there are many different ways that you could interpret that uh, a regional trail network would support different goals such as recreation. So we worked with uh, our partners and then also the, the SACOG Board of Directors to identify what are the different metrics that we would be able to, to use to determine whether we did truly have a, a trail network that is going to support our goal of health. Uh, it's also worth noting that the goals, uh, what we heard from our partners is the goals of health, environmental justice, and economic vitality had the greatest potential to create a regionally beneficial trail network that serves the needs of residents, while simultaneously helping our region recover from the ongoing pandemic impacts. So let's take a deeper dive at what we're looking at when we talk about a trail network that supports health. So we know from other trail networks in the United States that your proximity to a trail increases the likelihood that you'll use one. Uh, we conducted an analysis of who has access to trails uh, in 2020, and we know that only 41% of the region's residents live within a half mile of a longer trail. We defined a, a longer trail as uh, being a half mile or longer, so uh, equivalent to a, a 10 mile walk. Um, and so we wanted to apply some of the, the basics from health policy. And when you are looking at a health impact pyramid and public health policy, changing the context could mean different things that make it either easier to do the thing that you want people to do or harder to do the thing that you don't want them to do. So uh, if you look at how public health policy changed the conversation around tobacco use. You have laws that prohibit smoking in public places or uh, tobacco taxation. What changing the context means uh, in regards to how we approach a trail network that is going to support health as a goal is that we want to increase the percentage of people that live within a half mile of a connected trail from 41% to 61%. And this is part of how we would make the healthy choice, the easy choice with this work. I mentioned uh, environmental justice as one of the guiding goals of this work. Uh, from that same analysis, when we saw that only 41% of the region's residents live within a half mile of a connecting trail, we also saw that that access is not equal across income levels. We know that about 45% of uh, non-low income residents have access to connecting trails, but that was only 35% for disadvantaged community residents uh, focused on low income. So your lower income residents have 30% less 
access to these connecting trails. When you combine that with the transportation data that we have from our region's long range transportation plan, we also know that people living in uh, lower income uh, communities or communities of color bike, walk, and take transit at higher rates than our other residents. So this 30% uh, gap in access or the, the likelihood of access not only means that you don't have access to this uh, place where you could safely bike and walk for exercise, but it also means that uh, for any trips that you may need to make, biking or walking, you do not have access to the same low stress, high comfort uh, facilities that other people in the region would have access to. Our regional, our regional uh, trail network aims to eliminate that disparity in access. And uh, for the, the last of the, the top three goals, we heard from our partners that the presence of a trail is not enough. It needs to provide access to something that you want to get to. And not only that, uh, somewhere that there's a strong appetite to, to uh, go to using a trail. So we conducted a public survey in spring of 2021 to unco uncover the values that residents held for trail connections. We received over 3,000 responses from that survey and we used those findings, coupled with input from local agency staff, to drill down to the destinations that are at the center of that Venn diagram of destinations that support economic vitality and types of places that our region's residents want to go to on trails. Uh, and from there, we have two different types of uh, destinations that are examined with this draft regional trail network. So there's connecting people to social gathering places where they can enjoy time with their family, their friends and their community. And then also creating connecting trail access to the places that make our region unique. So the rivers, the bodies of water, mountains and the open spaces. So we aim to make these connections with trails based both on the value shared through the survey and the local expertise from uh, staff and the community serving organizations that have been part of the steering of this project. Which is not to give short shrift to the other three foundational goals. We have measures for those as well, but we've uh, admittedly spent uh, a lot of effort on uh, achieving the goals within the first three, which were uh, harder lifts to form with a connected trail network. So with that, uh, we have a pause for questions. We uh, turn to Dustin, any? Yeah, um, all we have right now are a couple comments in the chat. Um, Sorry if my internet connection is unstable. Uh, I might just stop video for a moment. Uh, from Lori, uh, uh, says, I'm from upstate New York and know firsthand that the Empire State Trail System definitely adds dramatically to quality of life and tourism in the cities and small towns. This trail system crosses the east, west, and north, south. And they also provided um, a link to the trail. Thank you for that. Um, it's awesome to to hear about, uh, you know, exciting um, transformational projects across the country to, uh, you know, give us some, uh, you know, something to inspire us as we do our project. Any reaction to that, Victoria? Adding another trail to the list of travel destinations for one, uh, and looking forward to checking that out. Um, the Great. Link that is. So we do have some questions coming in the chat um, from a Marcus. Uh, Prasad, I live in Live Oak and pay high Melarus taxes. Uh, hear, hear you there. Um, our city has a huge parks and rec budget, but very few parks or trails to maintain. How can this platform help our city management perform up to standards and improve our quality of life in this small town? Very multifaceted. Um, I, I'll mark that as answer live. Okay, uh, I think that within that, uh, we are looking for the ways to connect Live Oak uh, to 
well, mostly to, to Yuba City and then also examining whether there were any ways in which you might be able to increase access for Live Oak residents uh, to important destinations, such as we've heard that uh, uh, accessing the Feather River uh, just, um, just east of the city is an important connection to make, but there's ongoing coordination with Sutter County to make both of those connections that I just mentioned. And then also uh, specific to Live Oak, the, both the existing and the proposed segments of the Live Oak Community Trail are proposed as part of the draft regional trail network. Uh, but we're looking to use this regional plan as a way to, to jumpstart connected trail development and maintenance. So I, I hope that addresses the uh, person's question. Great. Uh, just the next one's a, an easy one uh, from Danielle. Will this presentation be emailed out after the webinar? Yes, we will email a link to the web page where we will have it posted to all attendees. Great. Uh, next, an anonymous attendee asks, are there differences in funding opportunities for a trail uh, versus a bike ped path? Um, I think generally the answer is yes, no? I would say generally the answer is yes, such as if you have a, a natural surface trail or something that is maybe using a, or a diff, yeah, mostly based on the, the surfacing and also the destinations accessed by the trail that is going to determine uh, the, the best sorts of funding programs available to them. Uh, when you're looking at some of the, the more natural surface trails, you're, you're naturally going to look at parks and uh, wildlife funding sources, whereas um, is something that is made for uh, more of the, more of your transportation, transportation focused modes, where you could have uh, biking, walking, scooting, uh, you can look to a variety of different transportation uh, funding sources, but between both of these, you have an intersection of community developing funding sources and then also uh, economic focus sources and many others that uh, it really does go down to the specific trail segment or bundle of trails that you're looking at as to what is going to make the most sense for funding that trail. All right, next question uh, from another, oh, let's see. Uh, another focus on Live Oak, great to have uh, good representation from that uh, area of our region. Uh, currently Live Oak has a trail near Apricot and California Street. Uh, we need improvements here, but we must also add new trails elsewhere in the surrounding Live Oak sphere of influence. Uh, has the new Garden Glen subdivision or the Live Oak recreation area boat ramp or near the Sutter Buttes Butte been uh, evacuated for a new trail? Uh, maybe, maybe considered uh, for a new trail? Yeah, evaluated, thank you, yeah. Uh, yes, that's part of the ongoing conversations with Sutter County. Uh, we are not quite there, but thank you for the, the interest in those and the, I would say affirming what we heard from Live Oak City staff. Great. Uh, and I think we have yeah, two questions from Lindell Price. Uh, comprehensive safety and security is not collected uh, for off-road bike paths and multi-use paths, much, much less trails. Uh, since transportation funds are being used by SACOG, how will this absence of data be corrected? Uh, SACOG works to support all of the agencies in collecting more comprehensive safety data. Uh, I think that there are many uh, different instances of uh, where we have gaps in safety data that we're constantly working to address not only for active modes, but also in communities where uh, safety concerns are underreported. Uh, 
So we're still looking at that and then working with local partners to in increase that reporting. Great. Now I'm seeing a, a, a lot of questions and a few in the chat. So I'm going to go to the chat real quick because I, I recognize maybe some of those have been in a bit longer than some of these other questions. Uh, someone asked to go back to the previous slide on goals. Do you want to just show that while we answer some of these other questions? So these are the, the last uh, three of the six. And um, for the first three, it, it's more about the, the types of destinations and uh, what we're working to remedy in the region. So I'm not fully sure which one they would want, but the information with the, uh, the written uh, uh, where you could access a PDF, this is all on the SACOG website where we talk about performance metrics of uh, supporting goals of the regional trail network. So uh, all of this information is available online and we will be able to send that out as part of the follow-up. And but since this one was the most text heavy, I'll leave it here, assuming that they wanted this one. Yeah. And then I'm seeing another question from Heather. Um, thinking of underserved areas such as South Sacramento that have comparatively less green space, uh, is there a plan for trails through these communities? Uh, there are a couple of different planned trails uh, through the the underserved areas of South Sacramento. We are still working on how they will exactly be able to connect with the rest of the connected network. Uh, you have some ability to uh, connect through the east, but many of those are dependent on future developments, whereas there's a need for residents today. And so uh, probably the you would be looking at a more immediate need to connect to the existing trails to the west of, uh, of Sacramento. Great. Um, maybe just a, a few more. I see a handful of questions in the, in the Q and A. Um, why are you using the term trails for this plan, uh, thereby causing confusion, um, says uh, Lindell. Trails are meant to relay any uh, space where it is uh, mostly for people biking and walking and rolling. And it's, I don't, I, I'm not sure of what the confusion is. So if you can please explain, that, that would be helpful. Because trails are rather uniformly used as a space that is uh, dedicated for biking, walking, rolling, although occasionally you could have a question used based on the, the nature of the trail. Okay. All right, next question. Uh, and any idea to open Sutter Buttes for public usage with hiking trails? Um, the anonymous attendee says this can be a way to generate taxes and improve the community. This is great. A lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of folks from Sutter. Awesome, awesome to have you. Uh, that was not addressed as this, as part of this plan. Uh, from Sutter County, I think there's a, a bit more um, feeling of feasibility of looking at different canals, perhaps, than it is to uh, open up the private property of the Sutter Buttes. So it is a, a fantastic area uh, in the, the views, although it's um, rather difficult to access since you have to know someone who knows someone. But uh, I, I will bring that up with uh, Sutter County staff to see if there's anything that we might have missed. Great. And, and looking at the time, you know, we probably maybe just do one more now um, and hope to get the rest of the questions later, or um, maybe we can try to type answers um, so we can move on to the, the second half of the presentation. Does that work, Victoria? Sure. All right. So the, the last one for this, for this uh, segment is from Mike Adams. 
Uh, with the growing popularity in e-bikes, how will these be included in the planning process? Uh, I would say that uh, with e-bikes, it really depends on the speed that they're traveling. Uh, certain types of e-bikes are already going to be permitted on trails, provided that they're not going, uh, that it that they're uh, not more of the, the motorized type that is going to go uh, too fast to share a facility with people on a more conventional bike or using mobility devices or, uh, or just uh, walking. So I think that there, there's a consideration on some of these in that you'd be able to take a trail for longer distances than you might be able to uh, to reasonably do without some sort of electric assist, but uh, it, it's going to be more uh, uh, an evolving policy discussion as e-bikes become more popular and uh, more prevalent in uh, what people are using to get around in the Sacramento region. Great. Um... For the sake of time, I, I, I encourage us to pause on questions, continue the presentation, and um, you know we, we can try to type answers or uh, get these last six or seven. See another in the chat um, later on the presentation. All right, Victoria, I, I give it back to you. So I wanted to go over some of the. Uh, some of the ways that we directed our work in identifying the draft network. We wanted to call out, we have over 500 miles of uh, what Caltrans calls class one multi-use trails in our region and tens of miles of informal trails that are serving residents today. So in our region, we don't need to start from scratch, but we can work to strengthen these existing assets. So we focused on maximizing the use of existing trails to connect the region. And we balanced that by identifying the alignments that had the greatest potential for uh, growth or expansion, and also to make connections with the rest of the regional trail network. But by that, some existing trails are meant to only serve neighborhood needs, or they do not have the a strong potential to connect to the rest of the regional trail network based on either uh, severe constraints or, uh, or uh, other local context. And so they are not recommended for inclusion in the draft regional trail network. So here uh, in this picture, we have the Clarksburg Branch Line Trail, which uh, in its uh, current incarnation, it connects to the high school and it's used by many residents today, but there's also the potential to connect further south and also further north as part of the regional trail network. Uh, when I mentioned that we have a goal of environmental justice, we also looked to uh, elevate trails that have the potential to increase access to lower income communities that currently have that disparity in access to connected trails. Uh, I want to be upfront uh, for any trail that is identified through either a lower income community or a community of color, there's still a lot of work that would need to be done for many of these to ensure that the proposed trail is going to add value to the community and not be a top-down process of this is where a trail needs to go for the benefit of the region. I, this is a, a lot of work needs to be done to work with residents to make sure that it meets their needs, makes the connections that are important to them. But we recognize that it was important to identify the potential of these low stress connections for residents who do not have the existing trails to rely on. Shown here, we have a picture of the Morrison Creek Revitalization or Project, which is a multi-benefit project that is in the works in South Sacramento to not only improve the natural habitat around the creek, but also to establish a secure walkable route that links an elementary school, a park, and a community center to all these residents, and also has the potential to connect to the draft regional trail network. 
Uh, we also focused on how we would be able to cross jurisdictional boundaries because this is regional plan. So we needed to zoom out from uh, just individual bicycle transportation plans and trail master plans uh, to see where there are planned and existing trails in neighboring jurisdictions that either match up or come pretty close to. And what do we need to do as a, through this regional coordination process to fill in the gaps for those near misses? So this regional lens helped identify some planned trails that had really minor gaps. And if those are filled, you'd be able to make major connections. And then also identify some previously planned corridors that can continue or experience resurgence in uh, implementation to make larger connections across the region. And then uh, lastly, the presence of a trail is not enough. It needs to connect to some place that you want to go. Uh, we focus on identifying the valuable connections in the region, the places that people want to go that are consistent with the, the values evidenced through the survey findings. And then also what we've heard from a city and county staff and uh, other community serving organizations and uh, these different places that are in the center of that Venn diagram, again, of where people want to go and places that support economic vitality. So here you can see the trails that are connecting to downtown Roseville and uh, parks. And it also includes the historical tributes that um, are, are part of this larger park that recognizes the role that the railroad played in Roseville's growth as a community. So throughout the region, we're looking to make the connection to the regional parks, to these community gathering places, and to meet geographies and social hubs so we can have a network that uh, does more than exist, but is well used and well loved. So from the, the draft regional trail network that was shared as part of, um, a part of your registration for today's webinar, we have uh, four types of connections that are shown. And this is uh, you know, part of the, the draft that was released in mid-December. So we have the locally adopted existing and planned trails. So we have uh, of that close to 500 miles of existing trails that we have throughout the region, leveraging over 250 miles of those to form this connected regional network and then also looking to add a, a little over 500 plant trails as part of the local adopted existing plant trail network. Uh, we also have um, what we're calling trail study corridors. So these are two different types of connections. On one hand, you have a projects that may be part of local planning documents, but they have recognized challenges ahead of them, whether it's that they still need to analyze all of the easements along a corridor or uh, whether there's a, a known challenging partner uh, that would need to be worked with as part of implementing the trail. There's also some of these trail study corridors that are part of the local planning conversation, but have not been uh, analyzed through a formal planning process yet. So we have close to, <clears throat> close to 40 miles of these locally identified trail study corridors that are going to help us complete this regional trail network. However, uh, as part of this process and uh, part of what we're vetting right now, we still have gaps in the network and fall short of our goal to connect communities across all six counties. We have about 70 miles of SACOG identified uh, connections and gaps that we're still working to, to fill. And uh, as we continue to um, refine the draft and add in new segments, we're looking to eliminate those SACOG identified connections and replace them with viable, locally supported connections that will bring our region closer to that vision of an interconnected trail system. Uh, 
through this, our top priority is to, to fill these with, a, with trail connections. So spaces that are dedicated for biking and walking and rolling and separate from, uh, from vehicular traffic. Uh, but as needed, we'll also look to low stress, high comfort on road facilities that can make these needed connections. And then uh, we will also look at um, whether we're meeting all of those performance metrics that we identified once we are closer to that final regional trail network. So as I mentioned earlier, we're accepting comments on the, the draft web or the, <laughs> the draft regional trail network through February 1st. I encourage everyone to, to contact Hannah Shudin with those, she's aggregating all of the comments. So then we can turn those around, share uh, what we've heard with local agencies and uh, see what actions need to be taken. And let me, uh, having gone over that, turn it back over to Hannah for one closeout poll. Hello guys. Okay, so this is the last question for today and it's a single choice answer. Um, so if this draft network were built, would you walk, bike, or roll more frequently? Um, you can answer absolutely, likely, somewhat, probably not, or no. Still getting some feedback. I'll give it just a few more seconds if anybody else wants to participate. Okay. Also recognize there are probably some people out there who do not know a way that they could possibly bike, walk, or roll more than what they currently <laughs> do. Yes, good point. Okay, looks like okay. we'll share the results. So it looks like about 50% of us uh, would absolutely walk, bike, or roll more if this were fully built out. Um, about 30% would likely walk, bike, or roll more. 5% somewhat, 7% probably not, and 2% no. Thank you, everyone. And let us go back to questions and answers. Yeah, we've got quite a few here, uh, 14 open. Um, I had one that I, I'm, I'm trying to type in answers. When you're trying to be eloquent typing, it usually takes five minutes for each answer. I started one, uh, it's from Richard. Will the regional plan bring or enable federal funding to develop or implement plan elements? My response is basically uh, plan trails identified as part of this network could be eligible for state or federal grant opportunities, but you know, since those programs are competitive, um, funding isn't guaranteed. Anything you wanna add there, Victoria? Any, any, any bigger, um, bigger things my to add? Yeah, my answer would be, we think so. Uh, that all of the indications that, that we have for uh, what's planned in I, uh, the, the new infrastructure bill and uh, just even the way that California is directing, there's a strong interest in bicycle highways. Uh, we think that there is a strong chance that we would be able to position uh, parts of the regional trail network for that funding. So fingers crossed. I think we can do it. Awesome. Um, I gave a very blase answer there, as you can tell. Uh, we have one from Jason. Um, I said I'd, we'd answer live. We might ask Jason to, to um, provide any additional detail. What is the timeline from moving the proposal uh, to be implemented where projects are, are started to connect the trails? Um, the, sh the short answer is it's not quick enough 
Jason. <laughs> it takes a long time, but what's the, what's the long answer, Victoria? So the long answer is that um, we're looking to have uh, prioritized segments of the trail adopted in May as, and then uh, to immediately go into implementation steps so what it takes to get top priority projects implemented, uh, get them started. We still need to conduct the prioritization process uh, and there's also nothing to stop agencies uh, from, from getting started on some of these. I mean, uh, some of these projects are currently, they, while not open today, will probably be open a year from today. Uh, I know that the 2022 construction season is hopefully going to be a busy one for our region in constructing trails, uh, including ones that are uh, serving uh, established neighborhoods. So people will, are already there and waiting to use them. So uh, from this plan, we'll be starting in summer. Uh, and developing strategies for segments, but uh, there's there's no penalty for anyone who wants to try to get the early start at the city or county or a transportation district level. Yeah. As a, as a follow-up to that, I think it would be helpful to answer Richard's question. I, I started to try to answer it, but um, how is the regional plan being coordinated with existing bike, bicycle path and plans of individual communities? Um, such as City of Sacramento and Sacramento County. Um, you know, so I was thinking, right, when you're looking at our draft network, you know, there's that purple, I don't know if you want to show the network, right, but there's that purple color um, that is all of our existing and planned segments, right? So they're the segments that they're the path, the paths and trails that are already built and or the ones that our local agencies have have you know stated that they're planning to to do them in the future in one of their local plans um, so i guess the short answer is absolutely we are but i think maybe the long answer and it might be helpful to connect to that last question right because some of those projects that are planned that have been in, you know planned for a number of years they'll you know the, their timeline is much shorter you know they might be done later this year like you said but some of those other ones, we don't know how long they're going to take. So I don't know, Victoria, you want to add um, some detail there? Oh, well, as I was trying to figure out how to reinstate my screen sharing, um, <laughs> I think that uh, it does lean heavily on the existing planning documents because uh, like over 500 miles of the network is or of the planned network is based on what is in today's planning documents. And it's really a much smaller number that falls outside of that. There was, a, let me see, recap. I, I'm still committing all of these numbers to memory, so please forgive me. Um, like about 40 miles of the, the trails that either have known complications or they're not yet in a planning document, but they're still part of, like they are bubbling up to the region through local conversations. And then uh, 70 miles of the connections that are not in your local documents and we're still working through how to make them. So it leans very heavily on the local planning process of uh, what has been determined as important at the city level, at the county level, and then looks to add to that to make these needed connections. So I'm seeing uh, in the chat a few folks, um, a few folks answered, uh, they, they weren't able to answer the poll in time. One person said uh, they probably uh, walk bike or roll more because it doesn't look like the network adds anything new where they live. Um, bummer. Um, and another person said uh, no, uh, but the close uh, the poll. So, um, so it's good to have those answers. See a few more in the chat. Maybe we should go to um, looking at timeline. Um, 
Does SACOG vote from the El Dorado Trail Group? Does SACOG what? Uh, sorry, my internet connection's unstable. Um, work at all with the folks at the El Dorado Trail Group? Yes, they've been part of the steering committee for this. Great. And then another one from the chat uh, from Sue, uh, again in South Sacramento. How about more bike ped connections across State Route 99? Um, or are, are, is our team just focused on isolated bike ped trails? Uh, looking at um, some connections across 99. And uh, I think that when it comes to where where there are trails that are actually planning to uh, come up to there. There's either existing crossings or planned ones. Any planned ones are going to be included in there, but if there are specific areas that you think are missing, uh, can we can definitely look at those. You know that there are a couple of different Highway 99 over crossings proposed uh, within Sacramento County but uh, happy to take a closer look if you send more info. Great. So I see one, um, I started to try to answer it from Mike Adams. Uh, in Davis, it appears that new development requires the inclusion of bike paths. Could or is this uh, a region-wide policy? And just from um, our review of a lot of plans throughout the region, we did identify um, you know, a number of jurisdictions across the region, I don't have it at the top of my head, that do require new developments to include bike paths, um, which is either through their general plan or a neighborhood specific plan. Uh, Victoria, do you want to add anything more on the, the policy steps, uh, the policy step uh, in, in this plan? Uh, I would add to your observation that a number of agencies do require it, that unfortunately they do not require that it connect to anything nearby. So very frequently you would have a isolated, um, you know, uh, you know, perhaps a, a bike path that goes around a development but does not connect to the development next door or to the shopping center next door. So that was something that we uncovered that we shared with um, our local agencies of uh, something that they could examine whenever they're doing development review, but it is uh, an evolving process. And then also part of the regional trail network is to try to create a, an amenity that is attractive enough that uh, it that people call out wanting to or wanting to connect to it because it is adding that level of value the same way that people would want to connect to say the American River Parkway. Thanks, I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a response to the over 99 over and under crossings discussion that I wanted to add to. Um, Jeff says you should make the 99 crossings under crossings instead of over crossings. Uh, under crossings are easier for pedestrians and cyclists because they don't have to go as low, uh, less clearance requirements, and cyclists can get some momentum to go up on the other side. Great comment. Thanks for that. Um, all right, going back to the Q&A, I, I don't know how, how much longer, maybe three or four minutes, Victoria, for Q&A or what? Yes, Great. sounds good. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Jeff's. Uh, this looks like a trails are mostly uh, oriented around recreation. Uh, why aren't trails being connected to destinations like schools, shops, stores, etc.? So there is a number of connections to uh, say like uh, smaller business districts within areas, but the areas that have more of a sense of place, there are. Uh, also connections to local stores and such. I'd say that by and large, uh, connections to schools is not prioritized as this because based on uh, what we saw from uh, the findings in the regional in the regional survey from earlier this year is that even with the self-selecting group of people that actively want to go respond to a trail survey, there was still a very uh, comparatively low interest in allowing their kids to bike 
or walk to school using a trail and a, a host of factors are involved with that. There's also the incredible geographic dispersion of connecting or like finding the exact trail alignments to connect with all of the different schools in the area to where I'm forming a regional trail network that is based on connections to school means that it, you pretty much have to connect everywhere and thus you're not prioritizing any area. So we're looking at the, the big takeaway from that is that for many uh, school connections, or connections to individual shopping centers, it's still going to have to rely pretty heavily on your on-road connections, such as uh, sidewalks, high comfort bikeways uh, that are part of the on-road network. But the trail network could be used to get you the, the longer distance. Sorry, <sighs> dang it, very sensitive mouse. Uh, it's going to be able to get you uh, those longer distance connections, and then you should be able to use the, the trail or the on-road connections for the final bit. Great, and maybe just one last question to wrap it up. Um, are trail improvements only occurring within member cities of SACOG? Uh, no, they're also within the, the counties of SACOG. So, there are, if I'm understanding that correctly, and then also looking at um, who people would need to partner with uh, to make these other connections, uh, such as special districts or uh, other people that may own uh, conservation areas. Yeah, sorry, I dropped off. Hannah, feel free to, to ask the next Q&A one. <laughs> I maybe have time for one more. One more. Okay. Um, how will SACOG show progress or metrics of advancing the completion of the trail network to stakeholders and public? At what interval? I've uh, been looking or uh, we're still figuring out what the, the implementation and the report out would look like. I could see at minimum an annual report, uh, but it's really still to be de determined and subject to input from you know, the SACOG board of directors and then also our partners at the city level, county level, et cetera. So, um, if you have strong thoughts on that, please share them. Uh, but I think that we probably will need to wrap up for today. We can, uh, we have a, a couple of different items identified to send out as part of a follow-up for this. And we really thank everyone for their time today. And uh, we will have this posted on the website at a timeline that Hannah will determine. So. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.